by the presence of this young talented man right here. He goes by so many different names. Let me see if I can remember. I believe I have him listed as his mom. <laughs> He's also known as Lieutenant Governor of East Point, hey. which I think is the one that's now taking precedence over East Point's Charlie Sheen. Yeah, East Point Charlie Sheen had uh, he, uh, he passed in a tragic accident. It's, when you, it's the accident when you add Ferguson and drive and late night. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hold on, guys. Let me just turn that just a little bit. When you're having money, man, she'll do it how you like it. I like it. All right. Everybody should still be able to hear. All right, so anyway, if this is your first time tuning into It's Lit, thank you very much for joining. Um, the purpose of this show, first of all, is to give me a chance here to get to know and interview and get you guys to know people you don't know here in the Atlanta area. They are extremely talented. It doesn't matter if it's books, poetry, music, whatever. That's that's what the purpose of this show is because creativity is just creativity. It is entertainment, and you always want to know where your entertainment is coming from. Um, also, before we really get started, just let you know we are filming here and broadcasting live from Grind Time Radio ATL at the Grind Factory. And, uh, oh, by the way, if you miss this, the whole thing on Facebook, if you don't have time to watch Facebook Live, tune in to Grind Time ATL on Spreaker.com and you will find a variety of shows to choose from. So anyway, back to our guest. Well, to my guest here, Mr. Ismond. Who do you want to be called? I'm uh, I'm Ismond, the young living legend, uh, East Point General, East Point Lieutenant Governor. You know what I'm saying? So I'm, I'm everybody right now. You know what I'm saying? Everybody in one. Right now, all of my split personalities. I'm everyone. I feel like I need to double split personality right now, just so I can keep up. Keep up, yeah. <laughs> But I need like three or four split personalities right now. Oh, no, you have to kind of have one personality. You can have one or two person. Everybody got a split personality. That's true. I know. You know what I'm saying? Everybody just like Beyonce got Sasha Fierce. You know what I'm saying? That's who she is when she's on stage. You know what I'm saying? So when I'm on stage, I'm, you know what I mean? I'm the youngest living legend. You know what I'm saying? I have to say, you do a great job with stage performances. Yeah, I mean, I've, been, I've seen you a couple of times. Everything from you doing your songs when you had your um, your mixtape party, all the way up to just doing the battle rap. And you are very entertaining to watch. You're very entertaining to watch just being around here. Yeah, you are a character of all sorts. Yeah, I've been I've been entertaining all my life. That's, that's, that's what I was born to do. I I, I can definitely see that because I am definitely entertained. <laughs> Around. I think one of my favorite things is when you go into your old man's soul. Yeah, you feel like like your granddaddy. <laughs> that's Leroy. That Leroy. That Leroy. That Leroy. <laughs> okay, so Leroy was your granddad. Was that your actual granddad's name? No, that's, that's an L name. Yeah. And Leroy. 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 That's another one of my uh, big personalities. Hoes don't get to see Leroy unless they around here, you know what I'm saying? They like closer to me. You know, Leroy don't, don't play in the street, you know what I'm saying? I Alright, so let me give everybody um, a little bit of um, the background about you, your bio. It's mine. The name says i it's mine. You don't gotta. You don't have to. I tell people all the time. I don't need no instruction. It's in my name. You know what I'm yeah, we're gonna talk about that. <laughs> all right. So, my musical journey started in his church in the youth choir, and expanded to playing characters in church plays. We're still gonna be talking about that. One. That's, that's actually. <laughs> I meant to tell you. That's actually the Baptist. What you and you were doing the, the church the plays, plays first? The plays were first. I always wanted to be a an actor. I really, I really didn't get to rap until I got about ten, eleven. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. To get the music, I about ten, eleven because I had a little voice on me. You know what I'm saying? So uh -huh. got to the music by ten. But before that, I was always playing Jesus, Martin Luther King. See, that's the story. I got the big role. You, you are. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So you got the big bro. I, I, I would think Martin Luther King and especially Jesus would be pretty big. Well, I'm pretty big legend. That's why I'm behind you. Oh, you better tell some stories about that. 
And eventually he joined the marching band. I so can see that as well. Uh, he began songwriting at the age of 15. After joining his uncle's um, record label, Oh Damn Records. Oh Damn Records. I think that pretty much says it all too. <laughs> oh Damn. Mon is a lover of many genres of music and he loves to experiment and challenge his skill. Regardless, his talent shines through, regardless of whatever I've heard him on. In fact, we was just in there singing a song. One of my favorites by him, by the way. And by the way, the music playing in the background, this is my first guess why I actually can change my playlist. Because this cast comes in with a full catalog of music and I've been blessed to share some of it. And this is some of the good stuff. So anything you hear in the background, it's mine. Yeah, that's a legend for real. <laughs> All right, so his songs can range from comical to introspective. <laughs> comical songs are hilarious. And not only um, does he write for himself, but he also writes for others too. That is just the surface. So tonight we're going to get past the surface. All right. Lord have mercy. Okay. You peek. <laughs> you peek it. <laughs> All right, so it's mine. Um, of course, we know the name says it all, but at what point in life did you decide that that was the name you wanted to take in okay. the industry? Uh, I've been signed twice. So my first rap name was Mundo. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. My first rap name was Mundo. I, I got signed the second time and I kept my rap name, but I didn't do nothing business behind it. You know what I'm saying? So I want to, like, I'm, I'm going to cut the music down this time myself. Listen, I mean, I need to speak real wide. Okay. That'll work. But yeah. Shape? Like I was saying, um, I was signed twice. So when I signed my second deal, I didn't do none of the business or like register my name or, mm. or, or, or trademark my brand. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? The, the record label did it for me. You know what I'm saying? So once I did the deal, you know what I'm saying, the record label owned the name technically. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. we came back and I and I, I really quit music. You know what I'm saying? I said, forget it. Since y'all don't take my name from me, I don't want nothing. It took over a thousand songs. You know what I'm saying? Really? A lot of stuff was going on. Money wasn't compensated. You know what I'm saying? Bills were love. You know what I'm saying? A lot of stuff. But the industry. But with all that being done, I said I was going to quit. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I, I got together in my head some start back, right? Uh -huh. I got to get a name. I got to have a name. And I'm like, why you got to be dope? You know what I'm saying? So I was like, shit, I'm just one like that. And then the it's came later, you know what I'm saying? The it's came from Instagram, you know what I'm saying? When I made my Instagram name, I was like, shit. It's money, you know what I'm saying? I don't need no introduction, nigga. It's me. It's my name. I don't need no bio. This money that came from Instagram, so I, I ran with that. it. Yeah, I like that. That's exactly that, how, how it came about. That's, that's really cool. That's really cool. I like that story. Exactly. <laughs> All right, so going back to the um, back to a little bit about your bio. All right, so you said you were doing, you wanted to act originally. I did. I wanted to be a big time actor. Big time actor. Who did you look up to? Oh, uh, Denzel Washington, Cuba Gooden Jr. Um, who else? Who else? Um, it's a whole lot of actors. Uh, Martin Lawrence, mm -hmm. uh, Bernie Mac. Oh, oh my God, Bernie Mac! I can't believe awesome. Bernie Mac. I actually cried. When he I died. actually idolized Bernie Mac. You know what I'm saying? I'm not, I, that's why I'm so funny. People like like laugh at me and stuff. So like because you know what I'm saying? that's why my my comical songs like the one in the background they be so funny because I, I idolize. <laughs> this the is man. another one of my favorite songs. You know what? <laughs> at random times, the chorus to this song would just pop up in my head when I'm at work. Don't ask me why. It, just, it, it, it was on time. my mind earlier today. <laughs> I, I make songs like that because it'd be like it's so it's so grabbing, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh -huh. He's like you like dang, it's so funny. He's silly, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you can ask, I can see this one yeah. going down in the club. Exactly. And girls just have like crazy out there. Like, you know what I'm saying? But that that all come from the Mac man. I ain't scared of you. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I ain't all of that. You know what I mean? So it all come from what I what I came from. Like I wouldn't be able to depict these songs. I don't do a lot of stuff by saying these songs. My 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 personalities, you know what I'm saying? They they live in real life. You know what I'm saying? Folks be able to realize that. Mm -hmm. Every personality got its place, and they be in different places. 
You know what I'm saying? So, I like the fact that you said that. Um, everything that you, just because you're singing it and you've written it, doesn't mean it's something that you actually. Because you also got to remember that I write songs for the people. Exactly. Yeah, you don't want to. Yeah, you ain't doing the female part. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, I write songs for females, males. And I have to say, listen to some of the songs. <coughs> Excuse me. That been recorded here at the Grind Factory. I can't remember whose song it was. I, oh, I think it was one you wrote for Lady King. Mm-hmm. Can't remember which one it is at the moment. But I remember hearing it and loving that song. And for the longest, I thought she had wrote it until that night. And then you were so humble about it too. When it when it came out, it was like the you big have wrote the song. Yes, that one. Because I forgot. I guess somebody had asked about that, and she had said, "Oh, it wasn't me. That was mine." Yeah. I looked at you and I was like, because yeah, like, you yeah. did such a phenomenal job with that. It sounded like something that she would have wrote. Yeah, that's why I be telling people when, when they be all the time, how you do it, I write how I want to perform. Mm-hmm. I write how you would look performing. Mm-hmm. I write you a song that's going to be exactly how you would look performing. I wouldn't write you a song to be to be standing out oh, in the middle of the yeah, day. I'll write you some through. real mellow uh-huh. and sit down. You're going to have your song. You know, somebody with a acoustic guitar, the piano, and, and it's going to be some real. You know what I'm saying? That's awesome. Uh, that takes, think about that it. takes a lot of talent. That takes a lot of talent. A lot of um, being able to observe people and get to know people to be able to say, ask. Um, Parts of their personality that you, I guess, you kind of say like absorb, I guess, a little bit, and be able to put it to to voice. I guess because I kind of that's what I try to do when I write um, bios for you guys, and you know, I get y'all to fill out that paperwork or whatever. But if you notice, when I'm writing your bio, I start spending a lot of time around you, and I be just like staring at you, you like, what the fuck is wrong with her? <laughs> And it's not me being stalkerish. It's just me basically taking that time to try to get your energy, get your voice, and your characters. You know the different characteristics, the way you talk, and the way if somebody asks you a question, you would like the words that you would use to explain it. Because to me, with doing that, makes it easier to write write something that sounds like something that you've written. You know, as your bio. You know, because it's about you. It's not about me. It's not about anybody else. It's but, about who you are. With songwriting, it's it's different because it can be a concept. You know, what I'm saying? it can be just a concept about the song, and I'm taking the the concept and structuring it around who. I'm writing it for. I might not know nothing about you, but mm. certain life increments is already added. You know what I'm saying? We talk about this concept. It can't be nothing but so much a woman could be thinking about. You know what I'm saying? So I think about that also. You know what I'm saying? But I always been a, a extra thinker. You know what I'm saying? Like I always wanted to think a little bit more. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes it come back and bite me in the behind, but with the music, mm-hmm. it make me go further. You know what I'm saying? Like, like. In battle rap, people ain't gonna do what I'm gonna do. Like they're not gonna they getting out of the old battle rap, like looking people up and finding out nerd and all that. I wanna find out something about you. I wanna know somebody. I might just come to your city a day in advance. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, we're gonna get the battle rap. We definitely gonna get the battle rap. Um so this is a question I did have, uh, which you singing, because you do singing and you do rap. Um, you have a nice singing voice too. I think there was this song that you sung on it. I'm like, what? Oh, <laughs> I did it. And I think it was especially the I can't remember what song it was, but you know, the first time I heard you sing because I'm so used to hearing you rap. Mm-hmm. Like, I didn't know you sang. <laughs> Extreme love and <laughs> me and Dita. That, 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 <laughs> yep, I think that was one of them. I want to do whatever you want to. So when you were in choir, um, in the youth choir, what part did you sing? Um, I was a, a tenor. I was the first tenor, you know what I'm saying? Because it was like a male choir, so it was like first tenor, second tenor, mm-hmm. and then bass. How old were you then? Um, I was like 10, 11, like 9, 10, 11. Like so you ain't quite had that voice change, had he? Yet? Nah, so I was, I was up there. I was up there. I was, I was a dang near alto, you know what I'm saying? I was up there for a man, you know. Okay. I was up there. I can't even, I can't watch it. All right, so let's see. How many times did you play Martin Luther King? Oh, uh, I probably played. <laughs> I'm sorry, Martin Luther the King. Martin Luther the King Jr. 
I probably played Martin Luther King probably like five times. Five times? In my life. <laughs> all of them, I see it. All of them at church? Uh, no, nah, I probably did, did you it take church, church on, like, Did you like take twice. it on the road and go to school? I took it on the road <laughs> with the school. I went to performing arts school. Oh, really? Okay, so what school did you go to? I went to Tri-City. Tri-City right there? I went to right. performing arts school. I played Martin Luther King. I actually played, uh, who did I play? Who, what else did I play? I played a couple different roles. I can't even think what else we did. We did a couple. You said you played Jesus. I played Jesus in church. Yeah, I did. We uh, <laughs> we actually did some in school. I played a uh, male activist. I think I was like Eric Good Marshall or somebody. Mm-hmm. Eric Good oh, Marshall. so you was all historical figures. Yeah, I was historical figures. I did a lot of plays. Like it just, it just I strayed away from it because the music started calling me. You know what I'm saying? You said that was around about what age? Ten. Ten. ten maybe like all the way to middle school to 15 when I started writing music for real. Like I was writing songs, mm-hmm. playing around, but I wasn't really writing structured songs. Like I understand when folks be like, oh, I write, I used to write this, 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 this. I don't count that. I count when I actually wrote a song that made sense beginning to end. Mm-hmm. That was after you had learned. You know, after I had been through my uncle on the a record label, so I went through artist development at a young age, you know what I'm saying? Because <coughs> when I told him, oh, I can do that, mm-hmm. all you do, what should we do? I got in the yo round by 15. So I'm tired of playing. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to get in the studio. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Let me get in the studio. So, what was the first song you wrote? I think you said the other day. The first song I, I wrote. Uh-huh. Like, so I'm saying, I don't count this though. Uh-huh. The first song that I wrote. Because this one wasn't structured, but it was the first time you just decided you were The first song I wrote, I probably was like 10, 11. Uh-huh. And it was uh, Like a Pork Chop. <laughs> That was the name of the song. Like a pork chop. Like a pork chop. Was that supposed to be? Ah, oh, this is my jam. We were just in there yeah. singing it in. Ah, oh, I might break out the song in the middle of it. Go but uh, <laughs> now, nah, like a pork chop, and and that's that was my first song. I wrote. I sit down. I wrote it. Was that uh, supposed to be like a parody or something? Nah, I don't know. Because in my mind, when you say like a pork chop, I mean, nah, but I know. I remember like the word. I remember the word. So that's what like was it to the to the it, it, like it, a went, it went suck that dish detergent. <laughs> Like a pork chop, like a pork chop. Fuck that this detergent, like a hammer, like a hammer. And I and I kept switching it up. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? But it was like a pork chop. That was the name of the song. Like a pork chop. No lie, no lie. I can't make that up. I cannot make that up. I wish my sister was watching. I wish my sister was watching right now. I they can come back and comment later. Okay, wait. <laughs> Wait a minute. How is the larger church, the pork chop sucking up? Like I don't, man. Time? I was like 10. I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to be thinking about I that. I was like 10. For the rest and, my of the said, and my sister said, bro, you can't write no song. <laughs> I was like, I can't write no song. <laughs> girl, I'm, I'm, I'm reading read that a fifth grade level, girl. <sighs> I can't write a song. You tricked me. <sighs> Oh my God! Hey, Lady K, thank oh, yeah, you for tuning in. Building. <laughs> like a pork chop. Like a pork chop. Oh my God! Like a ham hock. Oh goodness gracious! Huh. That's why the other night we. That's why the last time you was. Uh, I know. That's why I said, "Don't wait." I'm gonna ask that question. I could. I wanted to spit me so bad, like cause that, I, it came right to me. I was like, "Oh my God!" My first song was ignorant. So okay, so that was your very first song, very first like song. a pork chop, guys. Okay, so once you learned the rules. Once I learned the rules, learn how to. Structure. What was your first first structure um, song? First structure. Take your time to think I'm waiting on the course. Good. Nice. <laughs> I, 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 oh my god. The first structure song. Southern Dale. Southern Dale. Mm. I love that song. My Mama teach me how to pray. I'm tired of you late nights. I'm tired of you long, long days. I'm tired of the young niggas stealing because that's the only on. That's the only one, but you know, mama see me out of pray. I've been chilling in these trenches. I swear I done tried everything. I was trying to make a living. I just want to make the young brothers get it. The only way you're going to get him is to pray. First social function. 15. 15 years old, I was writing music like that. That was nice. I had to think about it because I know I can remember it. I know I can remember it. That's it. I, like, I, I redo that song to the day, and I, 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 I ain't never thought about to redo it. I'm going to redo that song. So okay, so I'm gonna teach me how to pray those nights. So what inspired you to write that song? Um, my my mama, she she uh she's a strong inspiration in a lot of my music because she's a strong black woman. She came from 
she came from the eighties era of Chicago. You know what I'm saying? So she really from she grew, she was from Chicago. I'm um, from the south side of Chicago. Oh, wow. But oh um, yeah, she came from that era. You know what I mean? And I and I grew up always thinking like my dad was a hard working man. You know what I'm saying? Everybody now we were thinking like, wow, we always struggling. They work so hard. We still ain't got nothing. We mm-hmm. ain't got nothing. You know what I'm saying? So. It just come from the life of a struggle, a life of, of being smart all my life, you know what I'm saying? So I got to witness different things. I got to actually see what was going on, you know what I'm saying? The politics and everything, what was going on. So I grew up in a different type of life. You know what I'm That's what inspired my music, the, the life in which I grew up in, you know what I'm saying? It's just, it's just a product of my environment, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I grew up in the hood, but I wasn't an idiot. You know what I'm saying? I ain't have, I didn't grow up without my dad. You know what I'm saying? I didn't, I ain't grew up in a broken home. We, we actually had a house to go to, you know what I'm saying? Like we, we, we went days without eating and stuff like that, but we still was together. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And that'd be the most important thing right there is the fact that you're together. Because if you by yourself, it's hard to make it a struggle, but if you got, if you got the support system, y'all make it together. Exactly. So I, I want to bring that to the music. You know what I'm saying? I, um, I usually like I had I, I slow down cursing in my music. I I slow down on certain things I talk about. I certain I try not to demean women like that. You know what I'm saying? I try to uphold the women, especially black women. You know what I'm saying? Not saying that black women are over everybody, but that, that's that's my race. That's my preference for women. So I try to you know what I'm saying? Elevate black women. You know what I'm saying? I, I made a whole song about women without saying the b word, without demeaning them, and no. Um, that? Um, that, that was off the mix say how I like it. Okay. So what did you know? Because it's well, it sounds well. I guess that would probably be around by the age of ten. But when you fell into music, but I know in previous previous conversations we've had before, and what I've heard you talk talking about before, is that there you you are very very passionate about music, yeah, very. music in general, and to the point to where it's like if you couldn't do it anymore, you just that would be a problem. It would be a big problem. It really wouldn't be a problem because it wouldn't be. I I, I just. See, ain't gonna be a problem because they happen. Ain't gonna happen. No. They can't happen. Ain't, ain't no way possible. Like, I have somebody have to rip my tongue out and I have to be able to not talk ever. And then I still try to do music. But that still ain't got nothing to do with your hand. I'm trying to say. You still keep that pen game. Like, to you can put your words to music and get somebody else to bring voice for you. So it ain't gonna stop. That's what I'm trying to tell you. They gotta take it all. You have Yeah. You have to my head gotta be cold. Yeah, I got you. I got you. Yeah. Yeah, I understand that one. So what came first? Writing the lyric writing lyrics or rapping? Writing lyrics. Writing lyrics. Writing lyrics came first. How long before you decided to make that transition? I couldn't. They my my uncle them they wouldn't let me in the studio. You couldn't, you, you see, wrote something. That's why the first song sounded that good. Because mm-hmm. you couldn't. Cause that's how you had to earn your way <laughs> in the booth. <laughs> you couldn't just, you can just bring them any type of song. I remember the story behind your song. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's a crazy story, too, though. It's like the song spoke to everybody but me. I remember. Because you know, when I, when and I, to this day, I still, I hate this song. I don't know why. I hate this song. I hate the name of the song, guys, is It's Monk. I hate it. I remember that night. Because I don't usually speak up very much. At, I, at, let me come up. I don't say nothing ever. When they, ever, when they get started with writing lyrics and concepts and stuff, I sit back and I listen and I observe. But that night, when you was giving a hard time about that song, I couldn't help but be like, damn it, man. Why aren't you? This, this is you. This is so you. Because I can so see it. Probably because I've been sitting back and observing and watching. And then when everybody starts seeing that chorus, it's my. I was like, yeah, it's my. <laughs> I just, I, I still. So when I, I finally heard the finished part, I was like, I still. I still hate this song. This is but my. You know least favorite song. I can't. If I got a hundred songs, this is number. This is number one. This is my least favorite song. Okay. Number one. <laughs> but you know what? I can't I can't complain about that too much. Uh, because as a writer, 
I'm in a position right now to where I'm going back through my books and I'm doing some re-edits to get them for set up for re-release. And my first book, um, Heart I Used to Grow With, which is actually the first book I ever wrote, like dead serious. I had a review that actually says, I can't believe this is the first book she ever wrote. But after because like you were saying, you know, you went through your pork chops. <laughs> <laughs> and you you learn you know it's first time it's finding finding you you know finding yourself and the fact that hey I can actually do something with this and then the more you do it the more you do it you start developing the style or your voice or whatever I've noticed that my voice has changed a little bit or not my voice but my writing style so now like from at least books three to five right now and working on six have a distinct voice or writing style in it and the first one does too but I'm like I got it Oh. <laughs> so that's what I'm doing right now, and I am sitting there going like, "Oh my god, oh my god, how did I? Do- oh my god, did I really? Oh, it's horrible." <sighs> if I had access to those songs, I did. Yeah, that's right, because you said you don't have access to that catalog at all. That, that, that went with your name too. It went with my name. They can have it because it ain't got nothing on what's going on. That is very true. That is very true. When you, it's one thing to look. create something, but when the first time around, but once you evolved and you've grown and you matured, it's something totally different to do it all over again. Because it's like you probably would hear that stuff now and be like, trash, trash it. Trash is <laughs> like, like, like I be saying all the time. The only song I've ever made money off, man's to make a fuck featuring my heart dog. Only song I ever made money off of. Mm-hmm. I hate that song too. I'm completely like, I hate that song to my heart. Like, I really, really, really hate that song. What is it that you hate? Is it just the song itself? Or it's the like the, of the song? Or? I was okay. The the story behind the song. I'm in the studio. Me and Pat's were playing around in the lobby. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And I'm singing the chorus. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Cause we make this shit up in the car. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But we playing. Cause we we high. We coming off tour. You know what I'm saying? We oh, we they making us go back to the studio. Mm-hmm. We didn't really have time to go home and chill. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. We been back a day and a half. Mm-hmm. He folks, I'm like, go to the studio. Y'all need to make some more music. Mm-hmm. So we like, okay, we gonna make this bullshit song in the car. Excuse my language. Mm-hmm. We gonna make this BS song in the car. Mm-hmm. And we're going to see what they say. Mm-hmm. So we make it. Bash the makeup. You know what I'm saying? We were listening to this song. I was like, Bash the makeup. Yeah, make her dance. Yeah. You know what I'm uh-huh. I said, but what? I said, Molly will make her come. <laughs> and I said, this is how it all started. <laughs> Bash the makeup. Yeah. <laughs> Molly will make her come. <laughs> Put this D on her. Ah. That's how the song goes. <laughs> we can feel it in place on that one. <laughs> exactly. So I hate that song. Yeah, but I go into country towns and they love it. They know it every word for word. To this day, they know long, it better than I know. How long ago was it? That's okay. We dropped Master Makeup in 2012. 2012, we dropped Master Makeup and they still call it. For bands to make up for. You just want to stay I had to. <laughs> it's the name of a song. Sue me. Hi. Shouts out to LK on that one. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Turn this into the party team. I just. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm trying>. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so look. Alright, so with your song, well, I guess you did kind of answer that question now that I think What's about that? it. Uh, how close are to reality are your songs? Um, it depends on what I'm talking about. Uh-huh. Okay, let me ask you this then. What makes you pick a theme for, like, when you're in there listening to, you know, the tracks and you're trying to find something that catches you? Track. Um, is it the title of the, the producer gave the track that kind of put I've never, you on I've it, never been know? one of those people. Okay. I have never. Because I noticed some of the other artists around here, they kind of do a little I bit. I have never You're done that. Like, hey, yeah, I hate when people do that. <laughs> that's a pet peeve of mine. Uh-huh. I never try to do that. I try to listen to the track and see what it make me feel like. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Whatever it make me, if it made me feel like I'm supposed to be in a strip club, I'm going to say some strip club type stuff. Mm-hmm. If it made me feel like I'm in love, I'm going to say some lovey dovey type stuff. If it made me feel like I'm in the trenches with the gun on me, I'm going to say some gangster rap type stuff. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna try to listen to a song and see what I can feel. Yeah, see what you can feel. 
see what concept you feel, and then go to somebody like me and say, hey, man, I have this concept of this song. What you hear? That really work. Oh. Songwriting is easy, though. Songwriting is very, very, very easy. <laughs> so you would definitely... um. <laughs> Hey, Tech, sticking his head in the door and telling him he needs some more phones. I got you. They on the way. <laughs> they on the way. Watch out for that young living legend. <laughs> um, I was going to say, I was just thinking, don't ask me why something you just said, uh, with you just talking about, you just talking about the concepts and everything. Um, it reminded me of a conversation that you and I had uh, about a concept that you have for a story. And don't think I've forgotten about mm -hmm. it. If, if every now and again, I'll just be walking around and which you said comes to my mind. I'm like, man, I got to have some time so I can kind of sit around and play with that idea. That's, that's a, I, got, I, got, I got a lot of ideas. I can imagine. I've been seeing a lot. I've been, I've been part of a lot. Like, So do you say consider it to be therapeutic when you write? Do you like, or do I would say, do you find yourself in times where you get mad or stressed or whatever? Is, is the pen the first thing you go to to kind of help work through some things? The therapy isn't necessarily in the, the, the writing. Mm -hmm. the, the therapy for me is in the recording part. Ah, it's like screaming in a pillow. So screaming it in the mic. Like putting the energy into the, into the song. You listen to some of my songs, you can, you can tell how I'm feeling that. I like that. I like that. So, um, I know you had a comment about um, losing losing the inspiration and you know the voice and hitting that writer's block, and that you do you hit writer's block? Uh, no lie, I'm in, I'm like in somewhat of a writer's block right now. It's not the the, the block of writing like because it's not like I say writing is easy. It's just a it's like the motivation too, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, because you're you're kind of split between two different, two totally different things in the industry right now. Between you know writing and recording and whatnot here at the Brown Factory and um, being a part of the Brian um, Brian House, House Battle. Yeah, I it's not. Like, that's a, that's two totally different styles of writing, and I admire both of them. Yeah, it'll, yeah, I'm, I'm actually preparing for a battle now. You know what I mean? So. But once I get back out of, like, I got to, like, get in and out of out of mode and finish right up. Mm -hmm. um, around, I'm going to leave it alone for a couple of weeks and then I'm going to some music. Now, this is the one that you, what was it, uh, Fully Loaded? Yeah, two? Fully Loaded 2, two? Uh, Louisville, January? Kentucky, January 6th. Oh, it's in Kentucky. Okay, yeah, I couldn't see, I was trying to see that bottom part of the yeah, banner and I couldn't yeah. see it. Louisville, Kentucky. I, uh, yeah, well, you did tell me the other day that you get ready to start traveling. Yeah, I'm getting ready to travel. I'm, after that, I'm going to Warstown and, and Macon. So, you know what I mean? So, okay. Now, I have to Warner say. Robin, excuse me. Warner Robin. 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 So. Now, I have to say, with, with the battle rap, it is, it's so interesting to see you in two totally, well, two totally different worlds wearing two totally different hats when it comes to writing. And see you in the booth recording and hearing that versus watching you doing battle rap live. Um, I find that to be very inspiring too. And I tell you, you have a character for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think one of my most interesting ones that I saw, and I will never forget it, is when we were down there um, at Woodruff at the Woodruff Park yeah, Atlanta that, Hip -Hop, mm -hmm, for Atlanta Hip Hop Day. <laughs> and they did the uh they did the uh quarter toss to yeah. see who would go first. And I stepped on it. He did not wait for anybody to pick the quarter up and say if it was heads or tail. He literally <laughs> wait my guy stood up. He literally with the coin hit the float. He sat there, it was like <laughs> the first battle which is coming out the first, my first battle. Which is coming out on the uh, on the twenty second. Mm -hmm. My first battle, I snatched it out of the air. 
Oh, so that's your trademark. Yeah, that's my you trademark. Ain't gonna wait. I, didn't, I didn't do it the last time. I didn't. I didn't do it. I let. I let Is him. Is that gonna stop being your trademark? Nah, it's, not, it's gonna be. It's gonna be, gonna be one. Of, it's gonna be one of my little tricks I play. Like when I. They it's go, one of my I ain't, gonna, I, ain't gonna, I ain't gonna bring it out to the. Next time I bring it out, it's gonna be on a bigger card. Like I might go down to War Town and, and snatch it because I know I'm gonna have my. I'm gonna have. I'm gonna bring everybody with me. Well, uh, yeah, you say that is. You say that is because I will say doing it at Woods Park that day. It yeah. was. It wasn't no small stage. We was in the park. They were up on the stage, and it was a crap ton of people around. So that right there, that said something. Cause then nobody else do it, and you just said, <laughs> especially since you, <laughs> you and the other guy had been kind of going back and forth yeah. a little bit in the park before. And yeah. I mean, you used to help me. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's just banter. Stuff, right? Healthy banter, building each other up for the competition, of course. Right. And uh, so, yeah, when you did that, I was like, dang. Yeah, it just show you, man. Look here, bro. I don't care about what you about to say. I'm going first. It's mine. Ah, he won't say his way now. It's mine when you mention you know my name. It's a coupon. No, it's my slogan. What's the coupon going to get? Well, whatever you mean. Whatever you I, need I, need, I need to know. Whatever I need, you need. I need a full tank of gas. Yeah, they ain't got nothing to do with these streets. They got something to do with your car. Yes, they do. And my car be on them streets. Nah, not these streets. You got that. This is Target. Look, look. Your look. car be on them streets. Yeah, okay. I'm talking about these streets. Well, them streets, I need gas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to go down to the Valero when we done. Yeah, and I'll be like, it's Mars in me. Can yeah. I get my first of gas? Nah, they're going to say no. <laughs> nah, they say you the real old. You get a cigar. Get this cigar. <laughs> they don't never overcharge me because they don't want me to go out. They don't care about the police. I can police. see you in there too. <laughs> they don't care. They know I'm care about the police. I'm care about the lock on this door. I'm finna get a body. Of <laughs> you gonna you gonna wish you had a lock. I lock it up. You lock me. You should just get in a discount. Exactly. You, you, that you wish you had let me out this door. I have to knocking everything over here. You're going to be mad. <laughs> You're going to be hollering. It's going all the way. All the way through. I'm going to run on top of it. I'm going to jump on the top of it. And just run so when the cop show up and be like, who did it? He locked me in here. I'm talking to folks. I told him that. <laughs> I told him that. That's why I'm gonna go. I'm, as soon as he locked me in here, I'm claustrophobic, bro. Open the door. And I'm gonna shake the door. I'm gonna look at the camera and say, bro, I'm claustrophobic. Open the door. And I'm gonna shake it. And he don't open it. I'm gonna go crazy. <laughs> you can't blame me. I warned you. I told y'all it was gonna be lit. <laughs> Cause it's mine. It's always lit. It's gonna be lit if I'm in the building. <laughs> Period. Yes. Yes. Because I'm pretty sure you guys have seen him on one of the, uh, many episodes, I'm sorry, multiple episodes of the party scene. Oh, excuse me. Party but the party scene, scene yeah, but major shenanigans. Major shenanigans. Um, when are y'all um, going to bring up? Uh, really Real Thursday with Pretty T. Yeah, when are y'all going to bring back the uh, shooting the, uh, shooting the ish? Yeah. We're going to bring <laughs> shooting the ish back. Beginning of the year. Is it gonna be you and Smoke? Oh, uh, or are you gonna just we'll think about it. It's me. It's, it's just me. But right now, for you, it's just you. Okay. But right now, it's just it's Smoke because everybody ain't reliable. Everybody ain't got no reliable transportation. Niggas ain't like me. I you just walk. gonna grab random people in the factory and just be like, hey, come on, this. You just gonna shoot it for a little while because we do it anyway. Nah, it, it might not be like that. Okay. I might just grab around people. I was thinking, hey, we're going to shoot the ish right back. Come on, I'm going to be interesting. <laughs> hey, bro, what you doing for me in 20 minutes? Come on, bro, shoot the ish with me. Blow one with you. You know what I'm saying? Come on, excuse me. Excuse me. We can grind factory. We do not you might know what you just said. Oh, okay. Shouts out to the grind factory, like I said. <laughs> <laughs> gang gang. <laughs> this is gonna be a good song when it comes out too. Mm-hmm. I love Speak up on the violence. This is my black folks that struggle. This is my kids that lost the mother. Police took the life of a brother. Broad day, same way, and they didn't even have to pay. That struggle these days. Had to climb on front of the grind on that struggle these days. Police can't get in my way. That struggle these days. 
Uh-huh. Inspirational, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah, y'all got to, I cannot wait to have this music blasting and playing out there so everybody can hear it. Yeah, that's I'm mad that I'm not allowed to have a copy so I can just play it in my car. I mean, we're in the car. You just ain't got a proper tune for a copy. You, you don't want the copy. I don't. You don't want a copy. I asked and I got told off. You don't want to ask. You don't want to well, actually, I got you on my flash right now. <laughs> Come on now, now you got a car. <laughs> Come on, you work at a radio station. All these folks. I think there. I got signed papers. Nah, all you got to help with is, hey, I need to set this. You ain't got no music for me to put on on this link. <laughs> Y'all forget, I got a radio station. <laughs> That's like I'm gonna have to go put uh. I'm gonna put my favorite song on there. I'm on my phone. All you gotta do. Love them bells. Love them bells. Love them bells. Cause you're going on silent when you can. Oh, yes. Okay, nobody here. Cause I was like, why I gotta do that? Anyway, it's not. This is lyrics? Oh, okay. I hear you. Yeah. Uh, well, got me a got me a I know. Oh yeah, guys. I didn't tell you guys what we drink. I ain't today. been drinking though. I ain't been drinking though. I said I was gonna wait till the week of my birthday, and my birthday is a week and a half, so you got me drinking early. Man, well, this ain't the hard stuff. It is tonight. It is tonight because it got me a date tonight. Got a date tonight too. It got me right. You said he all right then. I got me right. I had a date in a couple hours. Mm-mm-mm-mm. All the way right. All right, so you've never given up on and, and just had to walk away from anything right now. It sounds like, from what, um, what I've been hearing, your biggest separation right now is just the difference between the battle uh, battle rap and you. You got to. I don't think people understand, but you you have to separate it because it, it'll start sounding the same. And I want my music to start to sound like battle bars, like all the rest of the. The rappers who do it, you know what I'm saying. I, I, every battle rapper you listen to, even the females, they they rap songs sound like battle bars. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, nah, I don't want them. I can understand that. It make me. It, it, it's gonna make it hard to write for women trying to battle bar times. Like, <laughs> come on, now that's not gonna that's not gonna sound sexy. <laughs> Like That's why you can't be sexy. I mean, when women try to know, <laughs> nah, uh-uh. nah, I've never seen it. Like, if they are, please point them out because I've never seen them. I said I just seen some women that look sexy because they bars of fire. Uh huh. Listen, <laughs> all of a sudden, the lyrics themselves aren't sexy. I guarantee it. It's sexy because her little fine self. Maybe acting it out or something like Tori Doe. That's one of my favorite female uh, battle rappers, Tori Doe. Uh, uh, she might be acting it out. We say, um, the, the kickback on the gun got my arm jerking like the the channel won't turn. The remote not working or something she was saying. Oh, that, but that, was, that, was that was dope. You know what I'm saying? But she was acting it out. And I was her little cute self acting it out. You know what I'm saying? Her little cute self. That was, that was sexy. You know what I'm saying? But them bars went sexy. She had a gun that, nah, that's jerking her hand on the paws. <laughs> yeah, that's not sexy. You know, that's not sexy, but it was sexy because I'm a little fine self. I was like, ooh, girl. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Which, you were just talking about acting out. Uh, I don't know if you were necessarily acting out on this one. Maybe it was because I was hungry that day. I don't know. Referring back to the uh, Wilshire Park. Deal. Mm-hmm. The oh God, how do I say this? Yes, uh, the young man that you were, <laughs> a little short, rounded dude. Yeah, it was a little, little plump, mm-hmm. shaped fella. I try to be nice in case he ever had to tune in. It is, but anyway, so this little yeah, guy. You know he round. I asked him. Uh, if you were uh, Y'all go watch that static. Yes, yes, the yes. Versus yes, yes. On it's YouTube. on the Grind Factory page, and I think the. Previous, either last, no, week before last, uh, website post. I put it on there. Go watch that. I asked him, was he a fat boy? He was like, yeah, yeah, I'm a fat boy. You know what I'm saying? And then you got up, and my favorite round was when you started talking about all the food. Yeah, I pull them out the hostess and cinnamon swirl. 
You're going to see a star crunch. I'll be at your door like ding dong. I'm trying to get intimate with your girl and ladies with her. <laughs> After she eats my Cheeto puffs, it's nacho cheese. I'll make you give your Doritos up. Doritos bucks. I don't eat the cheese in the lunch, but they be like, finish your lunch. Oh, yeah, I killed that. You, oh my God. Like, I remember looking around because I had heard you practicing that before we had went. So hearing you actually perform it and then seeing it, who you were talking to, I was like, oh yeah, yeah. my God. I know, I know I had, a couple, crowd, I had a couple bars. I had a couple bars that had touched his soul. The crowd was like, Dang. I know it was a dude behind me, like, yeah, ooh. I watched the video and I swear to God, his partner, <laughs> his partner, he was like, <laughs> yeah, you a big dude, my boy. But, the, the the one that's the battle excuse me, the battle that's gonna solidify that I'm a problem is gonna be me versus Brav Divi. I don't know when that's dropping, but me versus Brav Divi. Is that one that's already happened or what? Yeah, that's one that's already happened. Oh, okay, but the video just happened. The up. video hasn't dropped. Uh -huh. It'll be the next A hat that drops mm -hmm. after the twenty second. But that's going to solidify that I'm a problem in battle rap. That and after I do this next one in Louisville, I'm going to be a problem in Louisville. I promise you. If anybody out here see this from A-Hat Louisville, A-Hat period, I am going to be a problem in the building. I'm going to be like a bump on y'all behind. So yeah, back to you, a No, no, <laughs> no. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I, I'm in it because uh, I think I had one question. You gotta get over here a little bit. We'll just, 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 we Hmm? You took out to the cars, man. <laughs> I know, because you guys talking about the acting and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what brought it up. Okay, so what is it, because you, you said a little bit about this earlier, but what is it that you do to prepare for, uh, for battle rap? Because um, I am new to battle rap, but in a way of actually being aware of it and actually seeing it and understanding what it's all about. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie. Bars. Bars I now. swear to God, you have got to tune your ears. Yeah, you got to, because the bar will slip past you. You'll you like, be the whole... Like, why would he say that? You know the what? first time I went to one, I was like, what happened? You ever had Because I'm looking around, I mean, all these folks like, boy! Ooh, ah, all this reaction, and I'm like, I don't even know what the hell he just said, because he said it so darn fast, it was <laughs> right over your head. I swear, this is like something you have got, it's like business, like some serious happy battle, like going, ah, 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 and it's because their ears are tuned, so they know what the heck's going on. It's bad, that's battle rap, because it's so fast, and so witty, and so well written, that you got to literally be paying like attention to different references because if you don't, you don't know what the heck I said. Yeah, exactly. And so now that I can, I've gotten to the point that I, you know, can understand it now. That's why. Yeah, it's just like that's I, why I, I was, I was battling. I was battling Jag. And I say you want war, Jag? I got a fast car that'll shoot from the pitch. Nice car. Yeah. So I, mean, See, I, can like, I can get that. I can get that. Anybody else like, what do you say? You want war, Jag? Jag war. You want war, Jag? I got a fast car. You know what I'm saying? It's just, it'll like go over whole, somebody's head. You know what I'm saying? The whole food reference, the junk food reference. It would have went over a lot of food. It's like, like, it's like why a ding dong is car. talking about ding dong? Yeah, exactly. And hot fries. You didn't say hot fries. And, and lace the potatoes. What are you talking about? Anybody would even know I said it. Is hungry? Because again, we were in Woodrow Park. I actually was hungry, and we were standing right next to these folks that was barbecuing and chicken and stuff. I was really hungry after that battle. I'm pretty I know sure he was. was. I, I, yeah, I, had, <laughs> now, I was hyped after the battle. No, I was talking about your competition. Oh, yeah, I know he was hungry. <laughs> after I had cooked him so long, you know. <laughs> Till this day, I'm like, bro, you can let it go. You lost, bro. He's like, still talking about it. Yeah, he's still talking about it. Oh, it was my first battle. I think it was your second battle, and you knew a month prior, so don't hit me with that. 
I was prepared. You wasn't. You lost. They show tried to approach y'all in the park like y'all. Like they were seriously prepared. Man, y'all wasn't prepared. Y'all were not prepared. We probably won't drop that Demarcus versus Swavatar Jack Bubba. Because, shit, to be honest, Mark, we doing you a favor, bro. Like, that is trash. You are trash. But a lot of these folks are trash out here. A lot of these folks just ain't dedicated to their crowd. Now, okay, this is what I was going to say, too. Um, I've noticed in listening to you and, again, being new to the world of battle rap, I'm not familiar. I was only familiar with, well, I can say three, four people. Yeah, four people in the world of battle rap that I know personally. So I can, I've had conversations with each and gotten to understand where they're coming from with it. Um, you seem to bring something totally different to the game. Yeah, I'm, um, what I'm, I'm, understanding. I'm the, I'm the, I'm the actor with bars. No, no, that's not what I was going to say. I was going to say maybe, I, I, I get the feeling that you bring a little bit more reality and seriousness. To your bars. I mean, yeah, lately, maybe, lately maybe I've been, I've been, like, I kind of, I kind of switched up a little since, uh, since the Woodruff, Woodruff Park. How so? Um, I've been, I've been a little more animated. You know what I'm saying? I've been, I'm saying this, this bra, when it's bra, Vivi battle drop, mm -hmm. and you actually see them in line from which way they drop, mm -hmm. the way I did them, you know what I'm saying? You're gonna be like, okay, I see the strategy. So is it animated as in like your physical acting? It's animated my physical. It it's, it's more it's more passion in the way I'm delivering. It's it's showing like I had folks coming to me talking about, oh boy, you've been doing this, ain't you? Mm -hmm. My third battle, bro. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Blowing folks away, like, whoa, it's your third battle. Like, you know, mm -hmm. like I got like I sat in my oh thought I was BSing around here because I wasn't really practicing like that. It wasn't that, it was just I was sitting there in my in my duffy as we call it. I was sitting in my bag, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Getting ready to solidify myself. It's just like when you when you an all-star basketball player, you have what they call a, a breakout game. Mm -hmm. a game you score 60 points, 12 rebounds, 15 assists, triple double. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's your breakout game. That's the that's show up for what I really can do. On any given night, I can score 65 points. You know what I'm saying? That's what I was doing. Mm -hmm. On any given night, I can roast anybody. So, how much preparation do you have to put into as far as getting to know your opponent? Uh, at this point, I'm I'm at the point where I'm like, until I get big, I ain't even really spend that right now. And mm -hmm. so my opponents and people like DNA and people like that, mm -hmm. people with some real name. But by the time I get up that way, it probably some whole different cats. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, whoever top tier at the time, whoever you know what I'm saying. That's when I start getting to know them folks. But then we'll be in the same crowds and stuff like that. I'll be able to, you know what I'm saying? I'll be able to maneuver. But right now, I don't be in the crowds with these folks. Nobody in Louisville. I got one homeboy in Louisville. Uh -huh. What's that going to do me? He probably stay on the west side. I'll probably stay on the east side. <laughs> so that ain't going to help you out there. So, do you like, so you don't do like too much in research? I mean, I research they, they pages, they, they government names, and been locked up, stuff like that. So you look for that? Uh, I don't know if ammunition would be the proper way. To yeah, it, matter of fact, I, I do. I look for ammunition, whatever I can flip. I can, you know what I'm saying? You got locked up for, you know what I'm saying? Public indecency, I call you a sissy or something. Pardon me. I call you, I have you, I have a gay joke or something like in there. You know what I'm saying? I'm locked in public indecency. Uh, <laughs> he, he was at the Wendy showing. Showing itself to the to the drive through person. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, <laughs> dang. Okay. So, do you ever find yourself, even though you've written your bars for for a battle rap, ever needing to, or maybe just needing necessarily needing, but um, based on maybe something that they said on their um, during their turn to you, do you ever find yourself? Taking what you have and then just kind of switching up a little bit. like rebuttaling. Yeah. You talking about what they got like during the battle? Mm -hmm. Like you already know what your when it's your turn. What you supposed to be saying? But I, they I said tried it. Earlier. I have not tried rebuttaling yet. Well, you just let it but uh -huh. when I finally get the gumption uh -huh. to try rebuttaling, I want it to be against somebody like Chef Treads, uh -huh. which is the rebuttal king. 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's what he does. He hits you with four, five rebuttals back to back. Mm-hmm. And throw you off. And it'd be like, you ain't got, you can't really, you can't rebuttal him. You can't rebuttal a rebuttal. I've seen it done, but it don't usually hit hard. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just going to rebuttal of the rebuttal and king. I'm a, <laughs> but until then, I ain't going to use Rebuttal of the rebuttal and king. Yeah. Until, until I face the rebuttal and king, I won't use rebuttal. <laughs> because I'm scared it's going to throw me off. And I won't forget everything. Oh, yeah. You don't want to do that. Right. You don't want to have one of them on you. Because um, nah, that'll be the one that hit the internet first. Exactly. That'll be the one that go by. That'll be the one that gets 15,000 <laughs> views the first day. Don't nobody want to put out the good stuff. But whoa, oh. Oh, they don't put it out. Man, that thing would be there. Flew around so fast. She's like, ah, I got 500 views. And like, it just went on 10 minutes ago. What's <laughs> Mm, mm, mm. All right, let me go back because we had some other questions that we had kind of skipped around just a little bit. Uh, and I promise, baby, to take care of my lady. Okay, so during your time in the music industry, has there been anything that you learned that where if somebody came and asked you, Hey, what do I need to look out for? What kind of advice do um, you give somebody who's interested? Somebody just want to give you some money. It sounds like a good amount of money. And you'd be like, damn, that sounds too good to be true. It's too good to be true. It's too good to be true because if they're giving you this much, how much do they make? You know what I'm saying? I believe those will be what we call facts. I'm fat. Those are facts. Okay, every time I hear this song, I'm going to think of you talking about the video for this. Every time I see old people. In fact, <laughs> I'm going to see how they booty taste. Because you said you wanted to make this video in the nursing home. I deal in the early part of the morning. I deal with a lot of uh, older people that come to my job. And at random times, there'll be couples that come in. <laughs> And for some strange reason, this song would just pop in my head because now I'm imagining them dancing to this in the nursing home. 2030 on dance to the nursing home. Yeah, yeah I'm nasty. Nursing home is one of the biggest places for us. I'm telling you, transmitted diseases right they, they busting it open in the. In the they, I guess you think about it. After all the years that they've been around on this they earth, they've been around. Open. They've been around, and God knows what they picked up they back know in the '60s. And the 60s. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 that's fresh. Them fresh diseases. They get so now it's down. coming back. It's coming they back around. Them fresh diseases. Them old folks ain't ain't caught nothing in the '50s and '60s. I was just trying to stay and stay dormant. No, them came them out fresh later, diseases. But... They ain't, ain't gonna stay dormant. They '50, '60 catch net from a '50, '60 year old. I don't know if I want to think about that too much longer. That's why I'm having a nurse home. Like bowling. Then I make a trip in the morning. What's it open for me? Free nasty. <laughs> Free nasty. All right. So now that you're where you're at in your career right now, what would you have done or is there anything that you would have done differently in the past? I wouldn't have done nothing different. Simple fact is, I'm, I'm scared I wouldn't be as good as I am. I'm scared it would have changed too much. Mm-hmm. I watched The Flash and all that. Who is The Flash? I don't watch The Flash. The Flash but in The Flash, he go back in the past and he alternates the future. You know what I'm saying? He alternates the present. He alternates what's happening later. So when you, I always tell him, everybody be always talking about, well, I wish I could. Oh, do, 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 do. That's what he do on every episode. No, but he, he did it and, oh. and he had to, that, now you got to go through that. You got to dig with that. So oh. if I go back and I change the fact that I didn't do this and I didn't do that, I might be sorry. That's true. Because our life experience is definitely making us who we are. Right. Some, uh, sometimes it can be for the best, sometimes it can be for the worst. But a lot of times, <clears throat> if we don't experience certain things, it doesn't, like you said, it doesn't make us be our best. So, yeah, that's a good thing. Oh, man, the Grindhouse Factory, uh, I'm sorry, the Grindhouse uh, Battle Leaf. You know this one, too? Hey, all right. It's a high beat, too. All 
right. Now here we have to talk about the campaign. The campaign is the name. <laughs> so if you guys have been following anything on the Fire Factory, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, website, you will have seen a lot of promos for uh, the president of East Point, which would be K Tech. He was on um, Sit Down with Lady Kane last Saturday on the party scene. Let's see if I maybe can get him to spare a few minutes and come over here and talk. Mm-hmm. Hey, might well. But uh, yeah, we gotta see see what his busy schedule is like. Um, if Mon has been elected the lieutenant governor of East Point. Could you please share with us exactly what that means? Um, the lieutenant governor is simply the lieutenant in charge. You know, what I'm saying the head lieutenant for East Point, and now other, and now other rapper in my era, in my generation, in my time, doing what I'm doing. So they don't get to, they don't get to standing. In office, you know what I'm saying? They don't get to call themselves nothing. Because you ain't doing nothing. You don't get nothing. You don't do nothing. Nothing from nothing leaves nothing. <laughs> Facts. So, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, I can call myself Lieutenant Lieutenant Governor of the World. I got to be working as hard as the Lieutenant Governor of the World, though. If it's one out there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So if you want to be the Lieutenant Governor of East Point, you better be working harder than me. You know what I'm saying? And then I'm just gonna level up. You know what I'm saying? They gonna make me level up, and then whatever the higher the lieutenant governor, I'm gonna be above that. <laughs> Cause vice president or something like that. Okay, so you gotta give the list again. Yeah. You got you gotta give your list of where everybody where everybody. Oh, okay. Ranks. So okay, yeah, I got. I got just, this oh, only like. With a camera. Okay, <laughs> okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna start from right here. With the <laughs> the level is important. This is the level, the lowest level of importance. This is the highest level in part. Yeah, the top is great. Right here, I'm on. <laughs> okay, from the top down, we're going to go. Baby, you can't go high. Okay. Yeah, there you go, okay. God or your higher power, Ryan Factory and Intel, Martin Luther King. Um, Nah, hold on. Take that back. Okay, boom. Before Martin Luther King, Donald Trump's his lawyer, Jesse Jackson, and then Martin Luther King. I'm up there with in the grind factory, bro. Everybody else is up under the camera where the camera can't see it. Down there somewhere. Everybody else down there. I still yet to understand where Donald Trump's lawyer comes into the mix. Hey man, that man has not gotten impeached yet. <laughs> he did, he hasn't had serious charges brought up on him yet. <laughs> yes. Like they trying. They trying, but his lawyer is nah, his lawyer not planning. I think that was even before he was president. Exactly. So he was up there way before. <laughs> Wait. Dang. That's some, uh... He might have been right up from the Martin Luther King right before presidency. And then when presidency he jumped over Martin Luther King. Nah, he was right up on the Jesse. Because Jesse right before Martin. He was right up on the Jesse in between Jesse and Martin. And then he slid off his in the fat. Because he's still alive. And he... <laughs> <laughs> he's still alive and he's actually doing something for his client. <laughs> you know what I'm, saying? <laughs> I'm just being real. That man is working. That man doing his do- doing his job with due diligence. <sighs> well, yeah, he is about the only one that ain't got fired in less than a year. Come on now, everybody else been. How many food. press secretaries have they had? <laughs> Come on now, they never about five in a year now. Why is Kelly ain't always still got a job? Them two people are doing their job. You know what I'm trying to tell you, her job might not be, but you know what it is. Her job is to like seriously. Her miss- job might might be Monica Lewinsky. That is a POTUS. I was gonna say that probably much. Her job. That is a POTUS now. 
And the other side job, <laughs> the other job. Oh, the other job. Her the other, other job. A public job. She ain't is doing to that. misdirect people with the most ridiculous comments that they get stuck on the ridiculous comments and not the fact that you didn't answer the question in the first place. I'm trying to tell you, why would you even? That girl has got so hey, you cannot be mad at her. She got some dodging skills like a mother. Hey, you got to do your job. It's you like, got to do your job. It's like she had, especially when you deal with somebody like Donald Trump. If Trump, if you out there listen, what Trump? I'm just gonna say it's like she got some some extreme practice as a kid. She had to dodge. She was ducking the dodge or something. What did boy say? Weed. Weed. You know what they say? That. You know what they say? Weed. 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 You know what they say? You know what I'm saying? So you know are lieutenant governor in the building. Man. I had to read that. You know what I'm saying? iTunes. <laughs> Shots out to iTunes. What is iHeartRadio? Spreaker. Uh, Spreaker. Mm-hmm. Ah, Shots out to Spreaker. Shots out to Grindhouse. Grind Time Radio ATL. <laughs> Shots out to Facebook. Shots out to IG. Shots out to, um, man, they might just block our video for that, though. But shout out to IG. They just stole everybody else. Hey, they, hey, whenever anybody says, What's, where you, can you be found on social network? No, they ain't going. You know why they're not going to block IG? Yeah, they because they got to check out IG. Every time they, they do something, well, they will wait three months and get the rights to it. Well, I was just going to say because Instagram lets you automatically share your posts from Instagram to Facebook. All in exactly. one. Exactly. So I, I share on Instagram. I don't even go post them on Facebook unless I'm like making for real comments. Mm-hmm. If I got a picture of something, I'll post it on IG and I'm tagging Facebook and and, um, and Twitter. So I got to do that job one time and keep it moving. I need to say my Twitter like that too. I'm so sick. Of, I, don't think, I think I deleted that thing so fast. What, I'm, Twitter? Yeah, I, do. I don't use Twitter as much as I used to. I don't, I, shit. I don't know, bro. Because I, I make some great, I ain't gonna lie, I make some extremely great connections uh, in my writing career on Twitter. In fact, my number one connection I literally made on Twitter, and it's so funny because it all started from drinking coffee and learning how to use hashtags. Now, mind you, I wouldn't even publish that this time, nor did I know I was going to be published. I was still working on my first book. But every morning, I would get up and be like, eh, trying to learn social media. What the heck I need? That's why I said, what the heck I need a Twitter for? By the time I cleaned up the house, because I was stay at home at the time. By the time I cleaned up the house, feeding the kids up the school. I ain't gonna talk about, but it. I started drinking coffee a lot because I was trying to become a sophisticated writer. You know, <laughs> sip of coffee, sip my coffee, cup of joe, <laughs> cup of joe. Plus, I, even if I didn't drink the coffee, I would just turn the coffee on and let it run because I like that uh, smell, the aroma, the aroma of the coffee, and it made me think of Barnes and Noble, and it was relaxing because I used to go sit down and chill without the coffee, but with books and notebooks, getting notes and studying. <laughs> right, Starbucks now mm-hmm. Yeah, but it's so funny, but I started using the hashtag coffee, or what kind of coffee fresh with coffee. You know how people will just do random searches, or they'll see the hashtag, and they're like, oh, let me jump on that train. So next thing I know, there was like five of us who connected on Facebook about coffee, and every morning we would literally tweet out what drink, I mean, yeah, tweet out what flavor of coffee we were drinking, and then we would just talk throughout the day. It was like, it became a morning click. And out of that, um, I made a friend, in a writer who's with, um, oh my God, who she is, why can't I think of her publisher right now? Oh, Kamani Press, she's published, we both published our first book uh, within about two months of each other. Um, but we were both aspiring authors at the time. There was another lady who was an aspiring author, and we were, and it was a mixed race group. It wasn't just black women; it was a mixed race group of women. Um, but everybody has done something different. But well, one of the women ended up being the person who got me, helped me get my first contract as a published author. And it was so funny because. Um, in between getting to know each other, um, she was also she also is a um, editor, and she started following my blog when I first started learning how to blog. And part of me blogging was about learning how to write and you know talk to people, basically. And I had shared like a portion of a chapter in my first book that I had just finished writing. It was really really emotional. It was about a woman who had basically just got raped and she was trying to figure out what she was going to do and I had voted in a blog post and posted on there and she hit me up um, because she had saw my post on Twitter about the blog and she was like hey 
let me get that whole chapter. I want to chapter. I want to edit it for you. When she read the whole chapter and did the editing, she was like, let me get the first couple of chapters. Next thing I know, she was like, let me just get the whole book. And she's been my mentor like this ever since. Some on Twitter, so you never know what connections you make on Twitter. Exactly, exactly. But I don't I even try. The field I'm in mean, is so saturated, man. Folks always think they somebody in my field, so I don't really, I don't really too much care who I bump elbows and rub elbows with. Cause everybody always think they somebody, think they got some type of pull or something. I don't really care about it. Let's do some business. We're gonna do some business. We can do some business. We ain't, we ain't, we can't, we can't. Go on. You know, that's all I'm saying. I still don't need it. <laughs> like I said, I don't use it that much anymore because you it's not one of those things that you just get on like Facebook. Because the stuff on Twitter goes so fast. Twitter is really like just a big billboard of stuff. And unless you got a specific hashtag that you feel like taking time out your day to go visit to just find out what all people have said. So I just learned how to use it. So beyond have making that connection with those those women, I don't deal with Twitter like that anymore. Uh, it just goes to my Instagram. <laughs> and that's pretty much. Okay, so let's talk about some random stuff. Random, random, random. random yes. Random. It's so random. What movie do you like? Oh, uh, I like um I like action comedies. Action comedies? Or stand up comedy. Okay. What was the uh, uh, last action comedy I guess you seen? Um Ridiculous Six. How was that? I had watched, started to watch it on Facebook. It's hilarious. It is? Okay, I had started watching it on Facebook and I mean not Facebook, but what's that? Netflix? Yeah, Netflix. I had started to watch it on Netflix one day and then I think I was like too sleepy and I just turned it off. <laughs> It looked like it was gonna be funny. I think yeah. it's probably still on there. I have to check it, it, was, it was kind of funny. It was it was just funny because the concept, the angle, the angle made it funny. You know what I'm saying? Like I like I like weird, weird funny. Weird funny. Okay. Yeah, I like they walking around this, running around this world looking for their brothers and sisters to go say they dead. And they brought everybody different. You know what I'm saying? Everybody different. So, it, was, it was weird funny. You know what I'm saying? Oh, that's what the concept of the story was? Yeah. For that? Oh, okay. I like, I like Jeff Dunham. You know what I'm saying? Yes, he is funny. Because that's the guy who does the puppets. The yeah. trill twist with the puppets. He is hilarious. He is very funny. He is, he is very funny. I love when they had those puppets and they sit there and they just make them talk like that. <laughs> and you can't tell. It's like, how? Oh. Because you sit there the whole time, at least I do, going staring at their mouth, not the puppet. It's like, Oh, are you doing that? With a spirit voice. Because I can't. I got some little extra stuff happening. I don't know how you do it. I can't even get over my mouth a little bit. I don't know. I, I still hear my mouth. Because you're saying mouth. they all be like, is it? Is it? So you can, it's not really practice. You can say it without really moving your mouth. It's got to make your mouth. You got to get. I know, right? I'm like, why am I this in your trail? That was you make you do that sometimes. You can't. <laughs> so you can, but it's a matter of how oh, can yeah. you get your. Oh, how, <laughs> how do you lose the extra? Because I had an extra vibration in something else. Exactly. I, I don't like, I don't like how team. they feel. You know what I'm <laughs> I don't like how that feels. I don't want it to be triple. I don't want my teeth vibrating together. I don't like that. I'm very particular about life. I don't like that. I don't you don't like want no vibrating teeth. I don't care. I don't care how much I'm used to it. I don't like that. I don't care if I was good at it. I'd be telling people I don't like that. So I have to figure another way to do it. I just over the top of the car. No, I just. Yeah, I have to so then you got to pull the pop out of that pipe in your mouth. Oh, yeah, or you look like a stroke man. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know how I put that. That is horrible. I'll give me a little wheelchair song. I'll just talk my stomach. But that's what I like. Yeah, 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 that's what I like. My favorite movie of all time would have to be Temptation. I'm trying to think of that. I'm thinking of Five Heartbeats. I'm sorry. <laughs> Temptation. My favorite movie of all time. My favorite gangster movie of all time is New Jack City. Mm -hmm. 
I don't know he had one on the other day. I forgot what the name was. It was a random name, but it started, it was really weird, but it was excuse me, it was cool because it was like they shot it in first person. Well not not necessarily first person, but like in the style of like a video game. So you were seeing like some of the things from their point of view. And it was like they when it made it from this is me being an well, it's like when they made it, when the main character made it to certain stages, it's like new people would come in and all this. But it was some, some like the government, different states decided they were going to succeed from the government or whatnot. So it was like a coup or whatever. And it was like, I guess the girl and her boyfriend started out walking in the subway, just having a regular conversation about what they're going to eat and blah, 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 blah. And then all of a sudden, this brand is like, where is everybody at? You know, nobody in the train, you know, like in the barter station, nobody's there. So all of a sudden, this dude's running down the steps on fire, and it's like, what the hell about? And then when they go upstairs, all of a sudden, it's like gunshot shooting, bombs going off, and it was like, what happened? But it was interesting because as the story went, it was mainly following this white chick. And she met this guy who ended up being like, it's new. Area. They literally sort of survived. She attached herself to him to survive. And different things happened or whatever. And it was crazy because at the end, both characters died. And it was like, but it was just interesting that the way that the story told was how it went to her. So it went from her, her boyfriend, to just her, and her and this guy, and everybody in between. And then them finally having a moment to have a deep conversation. And I already knew right then, I guess it must have been the author to me. He about to die. They having too much of a long conversation in this action packed movie. And they getting to know each other. And they almost to the end of the game, basically. Yeah, and it was just so random. You didn't see it coming. But you know, it was all happening. So then when we got to the very end of the movie, it's like, oh, she going to make it. She made it. This little white girl from who knows where. She, now she, she went from being just a little typical white girl to now she a bad. A badass walking around can to gun shoot people. <laughs> like in the course of the day. Not even twenty four hours a day. From morning to noon. From the evening. And then all of a sudden she <laughs> dead. I was like I was kinda of mad at first. <laughs> but I was like, but the reality of the storytelling, it actually fit. But the That's yeah, tough. I'm just saying be like real corny Caucasian movies that are good to be talking you know, real <laughs> Caucasian yeah. I can't think of the last one I watched other than well not Caucasian uh, a regular <laughs> what's a regular Cajun? somebody from Louisiana money, you crop top. there you go <laughs> I actually watched Wonder Woman last night oh, Wonder Woman. you talking about TV series no the movie oh okay yeah. Oh, that's super. Yeah, oh, okay. yeah super. Yeah, super girls are TV. I had watched it. Yeah, I, I had the interest. I don't watch it. It was like uh, it, they trying to be like the Flash. I don't like Flash. Flash good to me. I like the Flash. I don't watch all the series. So who do you like, DC Comics or Marvel characters? Oh, yeah. uh, Oh, that's a flat. Oh. Well, it's so funny because at my job, they're well, kind of... I don't know. Superman with DC. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, oh, Alpha Man, oh, all of that. Marvel is... That look, look, like I actually have read Marvel comics in my life. I, Marvel is uh, Wolverine. Yeah, that's the X-Men and the Avengers and all that. You know that. what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. All, you know what I'm saying? I, I like them. Marvel, but I was a DC guy. And the funny thing about this, we asking this question is, I have never really read comic books. But, I used to read but comic books. the way that the movies, and I realized the other day, and I don't know if you realize this, how much TV you have time to to uh, watch, because I know I don't, mine just comes a little bit away. Um, exactly how many Marvel TV shows they are on TV 
right now. Yeah. They are. It's like, it's like all of DC. Supergirl. Yeah. Oh. Uh, the Avengers. No, that's that's Marvel. Yeah. Talking about DC. Legends. Yeah, the Legends. Legends of DC. That's, that's DC. Yeah, I can I get. I tried. I couldn't get in there. But, uh, it's a point. Oh, you got Flash. Yeah, the Flash. Arrow. The Arrow. Now I do like the Arrow. But I like the Arrow. I've watched the most of the Arrow. But yeah, yeah, I've really watched the Arrow. Hey, I hate it. But the chicks on that show got on my nerves. The uh, the two sisters, the one who was supposed to be uh his girlfriend uh, when he left, or whoever the one who and the dad, the most their dads was a cop, but the dark hair one, yeah. I guess she's like now the black sparrow or something. Yeah. I don't know what it was about that actress, but that actress got on my nerves every time she had a thing. I like her sister. Exactly. But I ain't, I ain't really get into Arrow. I can't really get into Arrow. If it had, it was the I can Because after about season, what they on season five or six or something? I don't know. Yeah, uh, after about season three, the I can't even kind of do off. Then I started paying more attention to it. I think editing or something happened. Or I finally got to my limit with with the uh, lawyer chicken said I had to. And I think it was after they killed the sister. And then all of a sudden she wanted to come and she tried to be her sister. I like, nah, I'm good. And then because they keep on making show like power and empire that mm-hmm. I don't watch this shit. You don't watch either one of them? I watch Power and Empire though. I, I get a different view from both of them. Mm-hmm. I have not watched Power yet. I've been hearing everybody talk about it, but I have not watched it. One of these days, I got it. I think I got it saved in my queue. But it's, it's not one that I finally just said, okay, let me sit here and binge watch one of these episodes. I haven't like, gotten to that. You like Power. Power is well written. Yeah, I have to check it out. Because I was all into Empire. The first season of Empire was good. The second season of Empire was like... The third, the beginning of the at, the... at the end of the second season of Empire, they barely got to go back and watch the third. Reason being is how the AC double hockey says, are you going and I did that on purpose? How are you going to take the same two women, the first end of the first season, the white chick pregnant, the black chick trying to kill her. <clears throat> the end of the second season, the black chick pregnant, the white chick that had a miscarriage because the black woman made her had a miscarriage. And they both fighting and somebody about to die at the end of two episodes, two seasons back to back. They just reversed the role. I was like, right, I, I can't. And then season three, as much as I tried, I didn't even make it halfway because then the editing starts up. And by editing, I'm talking about the editing of the timing of, of what was happening during the course of the day. Because I watched one episode of Chicky going to the Chicky. That's, my guy, Cookie. That's Chicky, somebody I know, I'm sorry. Cookie going into Lucius's office, smashing it up and having a serious breakdown. And then marching out and him chasing her around. Like when she went into the office, they made it seem like it was nighttime, like the end of a business day that she came over. But when she comes out, he's chasing her through the halls of the building. It's daytime outside. I did. Because I paid attention to the kind of details of the stories, and I was like, I just can't. Y'all. And there was some other stuff that was going on. I was like, I, I can't, I can't. Well, you can't even believe what's going on now. Uh, I gotta stay in my queue. I guess when I finally get rid of finish watching, catching some more everything else, I'll go watch that. You yeah. wouldn't believe what the last on. I heard somebody said something about Lucian that got paralyzed or had lost his leg. Yeah, Lucian lost the leg and he lost his memory. So, <coughs> been, been the- so did he get a fake leg or is he walking around? Yeah, in the- okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Because I was going to say, I had um, somebody at work had said something about Lucius being, par- being in the wheelchair and losing legs and limbs or whatever. And then I swear it was like a day or two later, somebody had a video playing on Facebook. And I looked, I'm like, they talking about the latest episode. He walking around. <laughs> 
Yeah, prosthetic leg, you know what I'm saying? It makes crazy though. I like I like the storyline, you know what I'm saying? I like the way it ties in the music, you know, the anything that was music I pretty much like. And that's what got me too, is I love the songs and everything. But to me And then exhibit is writing the music now, so they want to write who all is performing that? Is it the same dude? Well, it's still Jamal and um, And that's the other thing that started getting me off. But I'm like, how y'all gonna have all these other talented people in? We can barely get a 30 second snippet of what they got to say. We can pull a freaking three minute song on him. I'm about to hit him auto tune. I'm excited to hear him he singing pretty everything. He's a decent artist, though. He's pretty good artist. I mean, I ain't giving, I ain't saying he ain't. He yeah, is. He's the next. Next but, saying he's the next Michael Jackson. Okay. <laughs> I had to think about that for a thing, but okay. They say his name Michael Jackson. All the time is there. Shout out to LK. All I said is, I just want to hear some of the other talented artists they have on there with some of these songs and not just the ones that are feature artists on the show, on the episode that you let them sing the whole song but all the other character regulars 30 seconds I mean Shawna she been getting a lot of I like her I like her Shawna she been getting a lot of FaceTime you know what I mean? <coughs> White girl, we don't look on FaceTime. You don't probably know about the white girl that's on there. Yeah, like, nah. Blue. Oh. Oh, wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Isn't that, um. Bruce, Bruce, Willis, Bruce Willis' daughter? I don't have any. I don't have any who she really is. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I did somehow see that one episode, but I think that was back in one of the last episodes I watched, like in season three. Yeah, because. If I'm not mistaken, she kind of got like the long shaped face. Oh no, she was in rehab with. Uh, yes, that's what that's Bruce Willis and Demi on Moore's daughter. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I take your word for it. I wish I ain't trying to be funny. With. I have to say it sucks for you to be Demi Demi Moore's daughter, but you look like Bruce Willis. <laughs> I ain't even paying no attention, but she do look like Bruce. You know, that thing, man. That's crazy. Well, that's crazy. I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> but every time I look at her, ever since she was younger, and I first saw a picture of her and her mom, her, her sister, I believe, and her mom, and it's like the beautiful Debbie Moore. Damn, you look like your daddy. Okay. Sometimes that can be a good thing. Sometimes that can be a uh, a bad thing. But that's a whole other conversation because I actually had some thoughts on that earlier today. <laughs> but yeah. But um, other than that, you got anything else coming up besides the battle? That's January sixth, uh, right? January sixth, mm-hmm. fully loaded two, mm-hmm. Louisville, Kentucky. Um. February the 11th, Wartown. Not sure about the name of the car yet, but come to see Wartown. I actually got a couple gifts. Um, Augusta, watch out for the campaign. The campaign is going to come to Augusta. And, uh, the, just watch out for the whole campaign, man. Watch out for the grind game. Watch out for what's coming from everybody. Not just me. I'm leasing your words. You know what I'm saying? Boy? Watch out for, for the whole team's growth. Watch out for your own growth. You know what I'm saying? Why you watch us grow. Learn from us. Learn from what we do. doing. Learn from our mistakes. You know what I'm saying? For people who go back and watch this, learn from my mistakes. Learn from what I did. Learn from what I do now. Yeah. And get better. I want to build a team of super me. You know what I'm saying? That write music 10 times better than me and 10 times faster. Okay. So you can also follow me at it's underscore mind dot music on Instagram. You can follow me at my government name, which is in the <laughs> it's in the comments up top. In the comments up top. Government name. My government name. You can follow me there. You know what I'm saying? You can all hashtag it's mind anywhere, and I'm gonna pop up anywhere. You can Google it's mind. You can Google my government name. You gonna see what I'm about. Youngest living legend for real. I appreciate you for having me. Oh, definitely. I appreciate the grind I appreciate factory. You I, coming on. I appreciate. I never grind thought you'd ask about track. <laughs> I missed my last opportunity, so I said I'm gonna come here. Yes, yes, that was that was a crazy day, day right there. It's been, but there's been so much different activities going on up here at the grind factory that there's a lot of stuff 
um, different shows that have not been able to, to be happening when they're supposed to be happening. Right. But it's not because anybody's not been able to. It's just honestly time and some things got to take a little bit of precedent sometimes. But we're going to start getting back on the ball and hopefully after the beginning, after, after the first of the year, things will be going um, going pretty good. We have a little bit better routine. But then again, who knows? Some things might be pushed off a lot more. <laughs> But um, again, Mon, thank you very much. I appreciate you coming out tonight and laughing it up and sharing some of your stories. I look forward when we off the air and go hit back in room with everybody. And uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, one of the multiple personalities of Mon is gonna come out. We're gonna get some good grandpa stories. Nah, I mean, I, I got a date tonight, so I, I love oh. I love Leroy at the house tonight. Right? Leroy, okay, we. Got a lieutenant governor in the building. Ah, oh, lieutenant governor. I got my grown man on. You see, I ain't been shaving the face. You know? <laughs> Your grown man. I mean, my grown man on. You know what I'm saying? Okay. <laughs> you know, I'm dropping a song on my birthday too, y'all. I don't tell y'all what. But I'm dropping a song on my birthday. Okay. All right. We're gonna be looking forward to it. Seven nineteen. Seven nineteen. I don't know. Maybe um. Next time we on major shenanigans, I know you're going to drop by. If you in the building, you always do. I'm gonna drop by. Even if it would be so funny. Don't say shot. Yeah, you by. don't even have to be in the in the camera. You should be laid over there on the side. Kick. Oh well, there's no side right here now. You well, be I'm laid. You be and you be across the room. You know what I'm saying? You know, what I'm saying? You know I, I lay back on. The Man, you do lay because this stuff is so doggone thick. Like yeah, it's you a literally, big it's, it's like half a twin. Yeah, that's true. That's a big you could literally lay here and be comfortable. That way you can't go all the way back. You can't. You can't. Go all the way back. See, see, that's what happened. You and I both been there for a few minutes. Yeah, yeah. Like, you started that mess. Yeah. You and I had to start my pillow back there. I got to get closer. I started that mess. I'm going to get it And now we both like, all right, it's time to wrap this yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, now, that's real big time. We got an hour and a half. Come on, yo, show. It ain't like show. It won't be like two hours. This is fine. No, no. Show be like, how many Four and a half. Oh. <laughs> her show a flight to her show a flight to Canada. <laughs> <laughs> like, mm, I'll, I'll be on the first half. Well, she really be on it though. I had to give it to her she be on She been she been going hard for the last year, so yes. Yeah. And she had her one year anniversary a couple of months ago, yeah. so that was that was awesome. That was awesome. Yeah. But um, anyway, stay stay tuned. I know as far as um, it's lit. Um, I don't have anybody scheduled before the end of this month. Probably won't because hey, let's be for real. It's lit. It's uh, about to be Christmas. Yeah, and we're gonna New try to Year's. work something out. We're gonna find somebody. We'll do. We'll do something. We'll do something. We're I don't do know. We're gonna do a criminal show. We that's, had a whole gang hanging. That, that we need. We're to. gonna bring TPG. We're gonna try to bring TPG we out. We have. We have every. You know what? Yeah, I didn't see my new track come on no, one day. You get TPG um, in the middle. But yeah, but I do know in January I do have Rhonda McKnight, uh, Christian off of Rhonda McKnight is gonna be coming back. Um, we actually had to cancel her show a couple of months ago. Um, under these circumstances, but she promised me she's got me on calendar, so hopefully we'll be getting her. I think she's gonna be the first or the second show of January, but just look out for that info. But um, other than that, you know, you can definitely check out the party team next week with uh, Lady Kane. I'm not sure who her who her, who her guest will be. <laughs> just pay attention uh, to the Grind Factory uh, page here on Facebook, and you'll see that announcement. Um, also, be sure to check um, to check out Really Real Thursday every Thursday with Pretty T. Um, what else did I say? Major shenanigans. We'll be coming back if not next week, hopefully by the first of the year. Just keep them out, keep an eye out, and just you know we'll make that announcement. Let you know, because again, like I said, a lot of things have been going down here at the studio and have been a little bit disposed, indisposed. Hey, bye. Okay, so other than that, y'all do live for me. Huh? Y'all do live for me. Go for no, it. Just we don't go on bike. We don't let a fuck on bike. On bike? On bike. You have your money back. Hey. She'll do it how you like it. Hey. On bike. Woo. I'm that ass on bike. <laughs> Okay, let me stop fucking myself in trouble. All right, so anyway, you guys, thank you so much for tuning in. If you miss it, please tune in to Spreaker. Um, go to Spreaker.com, look up the Grind Time 
excuse me. <laughs> That's our radio, ATL. I'm about to say grind fact. We got so many grinds going on. Got to. But yeah, check out Grind Time Radio ATL. Look up um It's Lit Tonight with It's Mine. Um to check out the video or you can wait for a few minutes and start all over again here on Facebook. Um that's pretty much it. Other than that, you guys stay safe. If you in the state of Georgia, you know we had that crazy weather yesterday. We had ice and whatnot and a heck of a lot of snow, and it was all gone by noon. Only in the state of Georgia. Other than that, we'll talk to you later. Y'all have a good night. Bye.